Good morning, friends. Uh, this is Mayuresh Joshi. Uh, on behalf of William O'Neill, I thank everybody who's attended this webinar. Uh, and today's discussion will be uh, more of a sectoral discussion uh, because the last seven episodes that we've done uh, was more focused in terms of market positioning. We've discussed over the last seven episodes individually uh, the macros uh, that affect uh, our markets, the macros that affect uh, global markets as well and a lot of factors at uh, play. So from this episode onwards, uh, I'll be taking every sector into account. We're starting off with oil and gas uh, in today's discussion. Uh, and then I will be taking over one in each sector uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, um, obviously, we'll intimate you which sector I'm taking up uh, for the coming but in all probabilities, uh, it will be the information technology center, the IT sector, because a lot of IT results uh, would have been out by uh, by the end of the coming week, uh, and we would have far greater clarity in what managements are seeing as a landscape uh, and the macro environment itself uh, for the IT sector as a whole. Now, coming to oil uh, and what we probably witnessed over the last few weeks, uh, uh, the WTI negative close that happened last month uh, in terms of the future contract, uh, the upheaval in the oil and gas uh, space itself with pricing. Uh, going haywire uh, as was indicated by the WTI pricing. Brent pricing uh, actually coming down quite significantly for a lot of concerns but getting played out on global macros, demand supply. And the third element uh, uh, in terms of uh, the the effects in terms of what happens with uh, gas pricing, LNG pricing, and crude uh, derivatives. So let's start the discussion. Any stocks, again, I think as a clear disclaimer, uh, is just uh, educational. Uh, none of the stocks discussed uh, uh, are by any way supposed to be a buy or a sell recommendation. So this is the broad agenda uh, on uh, how and uh, why oil, gas have been behaving the way it has the factors that drive it, the impact that it has on obvious sectors like upstream companies, downstream companies, and ancillary companies uh, who use crude or gas uh, as uh, their input costs. Uh, so again, I think if you are looking at uh, what went through in terms of WTI pricing itself, uh, you're probably expected to see uh, that WTI prices behaved in a certain fashion. Uh, so I think the clear differentiation in the first place uh, between the Brent crude pricing uh, and the WTI pricing. Now, Brent crude is uh, uh, a crude which is most commonly found in the North Sea. So where is the North Sea? I think north of uh, uh, Europe. So I think the region surrounding the United Kingdom and the Scandinavian countries, that's where the Brent, the Brent platform is. Uh, and it basically derives its name from the North Sea platform itself. Uh, now, again, I think both these terms, Brent and uh, West Texan individually, I think that's what they call for WTI, are used uh, very, very commonly and in the reference uh, to when a topic for pricing comes for uh, either of these uh, variables. Uh, but Brent, again, I think is a leading uh, global benchmark. Uh, uh, two thirds of the world's uh, crude or crude oil supplies uh, is based on how uh, uh, Brent pricing is determined at uh, this point of time. Uh, and uh, WTI is more uh, uh, in terms of uh, how the pricing uh, lands up uh, because WTI is uh, more a US based uh, uh, crude and uh, Brent is more a uh, European based uh, crude. But uh, uh, the, the basic differentiation here is uh, that Brent is more commonly used uh, in terms of global pricing. Uh, now, in terms of content, uh, it is described as a very light crude. Why is that? Because I think it's got very, very low density. And it is also sweet because it's got very low sulfur content. Uh, so when you're talking about both these aspects for uh, Brent, uh, uh, that is why it is more commonly recognized uh, uh, in terms of usage and as a pricing benchmark uh, as well. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the uh, WTI pricing, uh, Again, uh, in, it is uh, often, as I said, correlated with how Brent uh, uh, moves. It is also light and sweet, and uh, it has far lesser sulfur content than even Brent. Uh, but I think it is uh, it is uh, 
produced in regions where accessibility is uh, a little bit of an issue and to get it uh, offshore i think to get it to the logistic part in terms of ports uh, uh, does take time so i think the incremental cost that comes through in terms of fob the incremental cost that comes through in terms of logistics uh, i think uh, that is somewhere where the wti crew probably becomes a little bit of a more uh, expensive element to probably ship out uh, again it's always traded at a discount uh, to to brand crude uh, for all these factors uh, mentioned uh, um, aside so i think the uh, uh, the basic reasons uh, on <laughs> on uh, why the oil crash probably happened why wti went into a negative terrain uh, i think it was an unexpected uh, course of events and it was uh, both uh, demand factors as well as technical factors uh, in the may future expiry which uh, had had a huge say so i think the storage because of uh, uh, demand actually going down and storage capacity not being there at an optimal level across the globe because the tanks were full the inventories uh, uh, in in uh, storage facilities uh, uh, in in the north american markets or across the globe including tankers uh, at play were largely uh, were largely occupied to its optimum capacity and demand was not coming through because of the pandemic so the shutdowns uh, the expectations in terms of how recovery will happen uh, industrial activity going down the usage of cars planes not happening uh, which means that diesel petrol uh, both these factors and elements were not getting used optimally so both these factors probably had a huge say and again i think the investors uh, they just could not accept the physical delivery because of all these uh, factors at the time of settlement uh, and they had to dump uh, the contract at uh, at any cost and that probably resulted in negative prices uh, for uh, for wti <clears throat> again i think uh, cushing as i mentioned here i think uh, that is the uh, prime benchmark for wti that is uh, what is uh, undermarked in terms of uh, how the pricing probably get, gets determined uh, but now we have probably seen uh, that it has recovered uh, to a great deal so with the volatility that we probably saw in terms of uh, the may futures expiry what has happened in terms of the june futures uh, and wti has closed around 24 dollars to a barrel uh, brent is somewhere around 26 and a half dollars uh, to a barrel that was uh, yesterday's uh, close uh, again i think the recovery as i said for both factors for which wti fell off uh, so demand expected to recover uh, in uh, june as lockdowns are lifted economic activity has resumed uh, in a lot of economies uh, partially and it is picking up speed in a few uh, of uh, the western economies as well which were completely shut down and started activity now as the inventory drawdown starts happening because production cuts uh, have also started taking place uh, shale producers in the us uh, have also come off because of a lot of rigs uh, because of uh, the unproductivity or the non profitability in pricing at this point of time have uh, shut down and that's the maximum shutdowns that we've seen in history for rigs over the last uh, decade or so in the last couple of decades to be more precise uh, that is something which is uh, causing storage uh, space to be freed up as inventory gets uh, drawn down so i think there has been a recovery but all these factors uh, led to where uh, wti crashed during the may futures and it has caused a lot of pain even on our domestic shores uh, uh, for for a lot of oil and uh, crude traders uh, uh, which were described uh, very very in detail uh, discussions in in a lot of media publications as well so i think uh, this is a slide where uh, you want to say are prices weak or weak or weak or weak so <laughs> i think uh, is there issues uh, structurally and fundamentally uh, in terms of how oil pricing market is expected to behave and if so what are the assumptions that one can draw in terms of where brent pricing will happen what will be the brent uh, pricing including wti pricing for the better part of this uh, financial year and what kind of impact does that have for oil producers for oil explorers for oil marketeers uh, and end user industries as well uh, now a certain element in terms of uh, what uh, and how crude prices are uh, driven right uh, so you've all heard of the term opec and non opec uh, now opec is uh, uh, nothing but uh, <laughs> Uh, countries or organization of countries uh, which uh, have uh, probably decided to uh, uh, produce oil to a certain extent uh, and depending on the oil price dynamics uh, the call is being taken in terms of uh, uh, either taking production cuts or to increase supply 
as as the time and pricing suggests uh, now opec uh, interestingly contributes uh, 40 odd percent of the world's total oil production uh, saudi arabia again i think we would have heard this uh, in terms of how the saudis and the russians uh, were trying to work a deal out uh, saudi arabia being the leading producer has a significant change uh, uh, in terms of how oil prices are determined uh, globally <laughs> uh, so i think what the deal did it go through uh, initially i think has a huge impact uh, uh, in terms of brand pricing and you would have seen how brand prices had collapsed uh, after that deal did not grow through between the saudis and the russians uh, because largely i think if the supply keeps on coming through and if there is a shortage of demand uh, it is clearly going to play on price uh, in simple economic theory of uh, demand supply however i think in terms of uh, uh, where the pricing was uh, moving which was obviously southwards uh, uh, sanity prevailed and though i think the 10th billion barrel cut that, that they announced uh, I think was far lesser than what the markets were presuming and assuming at 20 million odd. I think there was some respite in terms of uh, uh, Brent pricing recovering from the lows uh, that it had uh, done. Uh, now to counter the OPEC uh, <laughs> organization, the non-OPEC uh, uh, organization or the non-OPEC uh, uh, entity took place and the non-OPEC basically are countries outside the OPEC, right? So main, majority of the countries, including Saudi, which are part of the OPEC, uh, the non-OPEC, uh, though a larger part uh, in terms of oil production, uh, <clears throat> they form 60% odd. But their decision related to oil production is uh, taken independently. So I think there is one major difference between OPEC and non-OPEC. Uh, in OPEC, I think you've obviously got... Uh, the entire country is coming together, they have their meets, and it is a uniform group decision that are taken uh, by the OPEC countries. And mostly, I think most of the OPEC countries uh, have uh, major oil producers who are government owned uh, and have uh, a huge dominant say in terms of global production and supply, who probably take the call in terms of pricing. While it is investor led companies uh, uh, who are decision makers in the non OPEC countries. So, I think that is the major difference. Uh, uh, so even though non-OPEC has a majority in terms of uh, oil production at 60 odd per percent, because of uh, a lot of independent producers uh, uh, being part of the non-OPEC uh, cartel, it becomes very, very difficult for them to determine pricing, for them to come together and probably have a say in terms of how the OPEC guys do, because OPEC guys are majorly controlled, are majorly government uh, Old entities, uh, single entities which control the entire market for a particular region, and that is why a huge difference is created in terms of uh, uh, pricing, which uh, still gets determined by the OPEC countries itself. Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> the other element in terms of uh, the production cost itself uh, uh, how is the production cost uh, determined, right? Uh, now, for Brent and for Shale, uh, as I was discussing. Uh, 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 the importance of shale as well and the importance of uh, rigs as well. So for a conventional method, uh, if you probably see how Brent is probably uh, extracted, it, it uh, probably has a huge uh, infrastructure setup that probably needs to be taken on. Uh, so I think uh, the conventional method of uh, drilling oil, uh, specifically in countries uh, in the Middle East, uh, whether it's Saudi, whether it's Kuwait, whether it's Iraq, Iran, I think you've got a huge infrastructure requirement that goes vertically. So it goes top down right into the Earth's crust. Uh, and the drilling takes place over a periodicity of time till they find success. Uh, and once that success is uh, determined, uh, you can have some rough estimate uh, in terms of uh, how much reserves and supplies uh, are probably there. So they call it the R&R &R exercise, where uh, the estimation in terms of reserves uh, are probably assumed once the initial part of drilling takes place. Uh, now there are a lot of seismic studies which go beforehand. So a lot of seismological players uh, actually are uh, involved in terms of determining which areas uh, topographically are looking very, very good in terms of potential reserves. Uh, because there is a huge extraction cost uh, if uh, wells are dug up, if uh, and then there is no success probably found. If you probably are getting dry wells, and there is no success of uh, oil being found, I think the cost that goes in, I think is pretty substantial as uh, <clears throat> as well. Unlike the conventional method of drilling oil, uh, as, as I discussed, I think the shale production uh, in US and Canada is, is quite different. Uh, so I think uh, instead of drilling just past the target deposit, uh, the wells will take a 90 degree turn <laughs> right, uh, in the deposit and run it along horizontally, increasing the overall cost of drilling. Uh, uh, so again, uh, 
to produce shale, as I said, uh, is, is far more expensive because I think it's not just a vertical drilling that they are doing. I think they are running it past the target deposit and they are also taking it horizontally, which is increasing the cost of uh, drilling substantially. Now, again, uh, uh, individually, if you properly look at uh, how the pricing will get determined, it all decides and is get uh, and gets uh, uh, decoded in terms of where the wells are, how far is it, uh, uh, whether it's onshore, whether it's offshore, because deep water drilling and deep water exploration also entails a huge amount of cost. Uh, so largely, again, I think, uh, uh, assuming all these factors at play, uh, every country would have a different cost of production, but a majority of oil which gets produced in uh, a majority of the regions, uh, uh, and with shale, I think, happening in a particular part of the U.S. Uh, and where the rigs are actually dug up, uh, along with their Canadian counterparts, uh, the reason of uh, shale oil wells uh, actually having a break even of more than forty dollars a barrel, I think, is is uh, somewhere which makes uh, economic sense for uh, oil to probably sustain about forty. Therefore, I think with the correction that you saw in Brent pricing and the WTI pricing significantly. It drove out a lot of shale oil producers outside the market uh, because it just did not make sense uh, to be producing below cost uh, and selling below cost uh, because that does not entail uh, business uh, economics and it was a loss making uh, effort. So I think they shut down their rigs. Uh, therefore, I think the rig count, which is very, very important and gets monitored on a large scale uh, when, when the global uh, oil pricing or the WTI pricing in particular is taken into account, uh, a lot of rigs uh, have actually shut down. Uh, I think there have been a more than 50% of rigs shut down. Rigs are close to 370, 380 odd, which are operational at this point of time. On the US markets, uh, there are almost 24 to 25 Canadian rigs, uh, which are in operation at this point of time out of 29, 30, which means five to six Canadian rigs have also shut down. And that is not a good sign for shale producers, but the economics of cost uh, is clearly not in their favor. Uh, now, again, as I said, uh, different countries will have different cost of production. UK, United Kingdom, for example, might have a cost of production anywhere between 38 to 42 to 45 dollars a barrel, which again means that uh, there might be certain uh, oil producers or rig producers uh, uh, in the UK, on the UK shores, who might be finding it very, very difficult in terms of uh, producing uh, Brent at a sustained uh, uh, and, a, and, and, a, and in a custom level as well. Uh, for the Saudis or the, or the guys within the Middle East, uh, uh, the production cost is assumed uh, uh, to be around 20 or dollars a barrel. Saudi apparently, uh, as, as the report suggests, produces one of the cheapest soil, around 10 to 15 dollars a barrel. Therefore, I think with the pricing war that they took head on on, on, the, on, 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 uh, on Russia or with the Russians, as I would say, I think they were pretty comfortable even if Brent was supposed to crash. Yeah. And the conscious decision that they still took still made them money. But I think it was a little bit difficult for the other players uh, because a few of the Middle Eastern countries do have production costs uh, between $20 and $25 a barrel. Uh, again, I think a lot of these economies are dependent for oil in terms of their GDP and their fiscal spending as well. So if oil sustains or stays below uh, $25, $30 dollars a barrel, the kind of money that they can probably make uh, is far lesser than when oil stays about $40, $50 dollars a barrel. And therefore, I think the spending capacity for a, from a fiscal spending perspective or the capital expenditure spending perspective on the government side for other projects like infrastructure, other projects in terms of social welfare, I think those uh, elements go for a toss. Uh, and therefore, I think uh, the economies of uh, oil staying uh, around these levels or below uh, sustainable levels where they're making decent profits uh, means that these economies are going to suffer from a GDP perspective as well. The second element that I was also discussing on the macro aspect uh, in my erstwhile uh, webinar as well, a lot of paper has got floated with a lot of these oil companies uh, uh, backed by sovereign guarantees of individual governments uh, uh, backing this paper on global markets. Uh, so I think as interest obligations, debt obligations for bondholders start coming up, uh, and if the oil dynamics are not in their favor, I think there can be some upheaval in uh, this bond market specifically related to paper floated by these oil companies as well. So I think that must also be taken into cognizance as well. Uh, so I'll just uh, let you browse this uh, graph through in terms of the oil revenue as a percentage of GDP for a lot of economies who are producing oil. And it's self-explanatory in terms of what impact uh, 
a fall in price can have on each and individually uh, either of these economies and for the oil producing nations as well. <clears throat> so as you see <coughs> Kuwait, Libya, Saudis uh, are hugely dependent but so are the other players. Uh, so on an average you can probably assume uh, the majority of the players uh, who are producing oil uh, uh, specifically in the MENA region which is the Middle East and the North African region which includes a lot of these players uh, is anywhere between 20 to 50, 60 hot percent with Kuwait being the maximum as a percentage of GDP contribution. Russia again close to 12, 15 odd percent which obviously takes that hit as well. Uh, United States not as much but yes I think uh, shale producers uh, do get impacted quite uh, significantly as uh, the drop in oil or the sustained low pricing in oil continues. Uh, again I think to drive back uh, the point in terms of how uh, <coughs> shale producers are uh, operating and obviously I think uh, when we were studying uh, uh, how the dynamics of shale oil actually get uh, influenced. Uh, I think uh, there were a lot of uh, elements at play out here as well. Uh, so again, I think the oil rig uh, drop that you've probably seen has been quite significant. Uh, uh, the Permian Basin is uh, one of the more critical basins uh, where shale, pro shale gases uh, or shale oil is produced. Uh, and again, uh, uh, the top two areas, uh, again, which is Eagle Ford and Permian Basin, uh, look at the production costs uh, which have probably come through. Now this was a study uh, that the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas has done uh, uh, <laughs> a few quarters back uh, and I think that nothing much has changed from a cost perspective. Uh, so I think uh, the players operating out of the regions uh, and uh, the, the x-axis or the axis on the bottom is showing the number of responses for each particular region at play and there itself I think the entire perspective of producers uh, on, on the shale part were anywhere between 49 to 55 dollars. So on an average cost, uh, the need prices to be sustaining about 40, 45 dollars. Uh, uh, and if that is probably not happening, the kind of uh, shutdowns that you've seen uh, in, in uh, rigs uh, across the US uh, is, is uh, something that uh, uh, is assumed uh, to happen over a period of time if pricing stays this way. So clearly again, uh, uh, the demand outlook and uh, what happens in terms of uh, uh, the the supply as demand starts coming back, as storage capacities get filled up uh, slowly and steadily, will probably keep uh, Brent pricing in a range. Uh, similarly, I think uh, the same factors probably work out for Brent pricing. And there was a very, very interesting graph. Uh, uh, the graph was uh, uh, showing that a lot of ships, uh, uh, wet tankers as we call it, which uh, uh, ferry or transport uh, brand crude uh, uh, from producing nations to the consuming nations uh, were stranded at sea. So there was a huge amount of red dots uh, that is actually being uh, seen across oceans, across seas, across the globe, uh, which means they are not able to offload their deliveries for a period of time because of the shutdowns and lockdowns that we've seen. But whether the demand will be there as this supply starts coming through is something to be seen because a similar story has got played out uh, or for the steel producers in China where I think a lot of ships uh, with, with uh, uh, steel, uh, both HRC and CRC, had got shipped away, but buyers uh, probably put their hands up because of buyer defaults, uh, the, the, uh, the non-acceptance by buyers of uh, uh, this, this metal uh, or, or HRC and CRC. There was clear, clear pressure in terms of uh, uh, Chinese uh, suppliers needing to take back their stuff and use it domestically and use uh, export credit insurance claims. Uh, ArcelorMittal had uh, posted a huge loss because of loss of demand uh, and the FOB prices like in the case of Brent and Shale uh, had crashed or has crashed down to $380 a ton uh, FOB. So again I think uh, uh, one must understand and take this perspective into account as well. Uh, now crude and gas uh, uh, again I think it's the main ingredient. So uh, as I said in my earlier uh, uh, in my opening remarks I think uh, crude gas, LNG, I think a lot of pricing gets determined in terms of how uh, <coughs> uh, Brent crude uh, or crude pricing uh, gets uh, laid out. Uh, so I think the raw version of the Brent crude uh, uh, is somewhere which determines the main ingredient in terms of uh, how it gets refined and ultimately gets marketed, whether it's uh, diesel, whether it's petrol, 
and therefore i think uh, uh, gasoline uh, uh, the main ingredient which is crude oil any impact on changes of crude prices affects gasoline prices as well so have a look at the chart i think it obviously will move in terms of uh, uh, the correlation in terms of how uh, how the charts will move or how the pricing will move uh, uh, and largely again i think uh, uh, it is it is very very similar and it gets played out uh, so clearly i think uh, the prices of gasoline uh, also change in terms of prices of crude one might argue that uh, the indian context we've taken on high charges uh, it is one of the major revenue drivers so in a situation where uh, you are assuming and presuming uh, uh, that revenues are going to come off the cliff quite significantly because of shutdown of industrial activity and even individual incomes actually going down uh, there has to be some compensation that comes through and therefore i think the logic in terms of uh, hiking excise duties not though not at a retail level uh, but again i think what the omcs might need to bear out uh, uh, and reduce their uh, uh, profitability by bearing those expenses at their end uh, I think the government kitty at least gets filled up to a large extent. Uh, um, if they would have passed this on, I think the major revenue generator uh, uh, would probably have gone down at this point of time. Uh, liquor, <laughs> I think, has been one of the major drivers uh, and one of the major uh, uh, excise duty collections for state governments and the central as well in terms of uh, how the whole mechanism works. Uh, but largely, again, I think what you probably saw, what you probably seen in terms of norms being violated. Uh, shutdowns happening again and again i think some element in terms of uh, how the entire uh, system might come back on i think uh, crude i mean uh, brand pricing uh, and oil and gas pricing and liquor pricing are one of the major components as well so clearly where do we stand in terms of um, the global uh, primary uh, energy basket uh, and i've uh, listed out uh, all different uh, variables in terms of uh, uh, natural resources or resources that can be used in terms of energy production. So this oil, natural gas, coal, nuclear, hydro, renewables, and so on and so forth. Uh, so India's dependence in terms of uh, coal uh, along with China uh, and the Asia Pacific. So if you probably look at the developed world, uh, I think it's far more dependent in terms of um, gas and oil. Uh, a lot of the emerging economies uh, uh, specifically located in the uh, <coughs> Uh, Asia Pac region are far more dependent on coal at this point of time. Yes, we have set out a target in terms of the renewable energy basket, uh, but again, I think uh, how we increase uh, the, the solar capacity, for example, how we increase the hydro capacity, for example, I think that is still going to take time and a few more years. Uh, so I think the Indian basket uh, is largely skewed towards uh, coal at this point of time, but I'm pretty sure uh, going forward, uh, uh, the hydro and the renewable energy basket uh, both. Uh, on the Indian scale and globally as well <coughs> is uh, going to go up quite significantly. However, I think from a consumption perspective, uh, India is the third largest consumer after China and the US. Uh, so we are the second largest consumer in coal and the third largest consumer in oil. Uh, therefore, any change in oil pricing uh, has a significant impact. Uh, we've already discussed this in our previous discourse uh, in an earlier webinars on how much of an impact it has on our fiscal uh, uh, deficit on a current account deficit or trade deficit as well in terms of pricing and therefore i think it is very very critical for consuming economies like india that if brent probably stays at lower levels uh, it is very very beneficial uh, from an economic standpoint uh, <clears throat> natural gas consumption is uh, 6.2 percent at this point of time you are the 14th largest consumer and there i think the percentage and proportion uh, is expected to go up uh, quite significantly as more and more investments are done specifically to the NELP program both in terms of uh, exploration drilling uh, as well as natural gas uh, exploration as well. <coughs> now uh, 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 let's understand uh, from a sectoral perspective on uh, what kind of an impact uh, does uh, uh, individually it uh, oil pricing and gas pricing has uh, on on stocks uh, so gas authority of india right uh, gale and uh, the basic uh, purpose of gale here is uh, to transmit uh, gases uh, so anything that probably gets produced uh, uh, is is uh, uh, is transmitted so they've got a transmission business uh, they've also got a gas trading business uh, uh, they've got an lpg and a hydrocarbon business as well and they've got a pet chem business as well uh, I'll be just discussing individually how these businesses properly work. Uh, 
what kind of a mix do they have uh, and the transmission business probably is working at uh, a very very steady pace uh, uh, because what probably happens in terms of deficiency as i said uh, in terms of natural gas production we are just 6.2 or percent which means that we are highly dependent uh, in terms of uh, uh, imports uh, uh, and and those imports probably determine the overall cost dynamics in terms of how they can transport and ship these gas to the end consumers as well uh, the pet chem business uh, is a downstream business which de gets determined in terms of how brand pricing operates and moves and therefore i think uh, uh, how the brand price uh, action is and if the brand pricing moves lower obviously being downstream products within the pet chem portfolio itself uh, has a huge say in terms of pricing actually moving downward which means that the profitability actually starts coming uh, in for some amount of pressure uh, again how do they utilize their pet chem plants uh, uh, is is extremely critical and the utilization level thereof uh, along with uh, expectations of fixed cost absorption for their own plants uh, is uh, uh, going to be extremely critical so gales uh, pet chem plant again i think not uh, being optimally utilized at this point of time and therefore i think the expectations in terms of pet chem as a division on the total valuation of how gale stands and stacks up uh, still remains extremely soft and poor uh, LPG and liquid hydrocarbons as a division again determined greatly by how pricing is. Uh, therefore, I think how the pricing moves greatly determines the entire volume based activity and the entire pricing activity as well, which also can come under some sort of softness going forward as well. Uh, gas trading clearly gets determined in terms of gas pricing. Uh, gas pricing uh, uh, is determined uh, uh, by, by four different hubs. Uh, so I think just to drive that point forward as well, uh, uh, gas pricing is uh, uh, extremely critical in terms of uh, uh, how a lot of these end user industries uh, probably uh, uh, consume it and how pricing is probably determined for them as well. Uh, so largely again I think uh, gas prices in India are determined as an output of the weighted average of four global benchmark indices. Uh, it's the US-based uh, uh, Henry Hub, the Canadian-based Alberta Gas, uh, the UK-based NDP, and the Russian Gas as well. Uh, so the combination of all these four gas uh, benchmark indices is something that is determined, and it comes with the one-quarter lag. Uh, so clearly, I think there is some differentiation for a quarter or so, but now gas prices have got revised, uh, and gas prices in lieu of what correction that we had seen a uh, quarter or two quarters back, uh, is now getting reflected at 2.3 to 2.34 dollars per mbbtu which was 3.4 3.5 so gas prices have clearly come down so gas trading in the margins that they make uh, is uh, expected to be uh, uh, constrained as well uh, marketing margins on the transmission lines and a few of the transmission lines had got approved uh, on the higher side from the government of india or by the regulator and the authority as well there is some element in terms of transmission marketing margins actually holding up uh, if you probably take the sum of parts uh, assuming all these factors at play the kind of price performance that you probably seen for gale has uh, least to be said but disappointing so i think all these factors are uh, something which has to be taken into account uh, and uh, the importance in terms of drawing attention to a certain uh, to, to the sectors and stocks itself uh, was how these individual elements on the macro base uh, causes a huge amount of uh, uh, earnings impact uh, as far as commodities are concerned. So like any commodity business, uh, I think commodities are largely dependent on demand supply, pricing dynamics and realizations in the end. And therefore, I think the end result uh, on how companies will respond to that uh, will clearly get, get reflected in terms of both top line and earnings. So this chart is clearly indicating uh, the kind of pain that has got witnessed uh, and therefore i think the examples uh, that i want to draw about from these uh, charts is how stocks get affected or how individual companies and sectors get affected and these players are all middle distillate players uh, who are not either producers or, or uh, refiners uh, but somewhere who are in the middle which also get affected because of the change in pricing uh, which which uh, happens uh, surprisingly i think lng prices have also crashed quite significantly for all the factors that we have mentioned uh, uh, in the beginning of uh, this uh, sectoral presentation as well. Uh, so therefore, uh, the pricing at this point of time, which is uh, close to $1.9, uh, uh, again, I think is quite uh, lower than what uh, 
was being witnessed a few quarters back. Uh, uh, so what has happened in terms of LNG pricing? What happens with US producers? Because uh, they need to produce LNG, they need to store it in special vehicles at a particular temperature, ship it across, have those FOB charges incurred. And therefore, I think even the US LNG producers, uh, even if they ship it to the Indian shores, I think the cost uh, comes close to 5.1 to 5.5 dollars, uh, which is still quite significantly lower than what we've seen. Uh, some of the Australian producers uh, are probably looking at costs at around 3, 3.1, uh, which is again uh, at break even or lower than their cost, but uh, they probably don't have any choice at this point of time. Uh, so a lot of the gas importers and a lot of companies who import gas uh, have taken conscious decisions uh, in terms of having force majeure uh, or clauses which are outside their control for economic or other situations at play and therefore i think reworking and renegotiating on either of these clauses with e uh, most of these gas producers globally i think will also entail significant price dynamics in favor of all these companies who are regasifying this gas uh, we come to ongc and critically i think you have a look in terms of uh, how the production and uh, uh, crude realizations for ONGC were. Uh, now, for dominated gas fields uh, of ONGC, and ONGC primarily, uh, as we all know, is an upstream company, which is largely, largely dependent in terms of uh, how bread pricing moves, uh, because with the declassification and the deregulation that the government has done, I think uh, upstream companies are free to, uh, uh, to determine their prices uh, in lieu with how global prices are moving at any given particular point of time obviously the pricing effect changes in terms of uh, uh, the the uh, dynamics that take place uh, on a weekly or or a monthly basis so, so it does come with a lag but it does come through as we've seen in the past uh, so what you probably seen uh, in terms of uh, gas prices for the nine months and the production numbers that are expected to come out for gale uh, for ongc around 24 mmt in terms of oil around 26 bcm in terms of gas uh, and similar statistics maintained uh, uh, in the coming financial year as well but looking at realizations which have come off on brent uh, which directly gets reflected right as i said from the top line to the bottom line for ongc i think there might be a significant dip with the kind of pricing that you probably see in terms of brent prices actually crashing Again, in terms of gas pricing, because gas also is a huge component, as I said, for ONGC in terms of top line growth, uh, with gas price revisions actually taking place uh, at 2.32. And a huge amount of gas production happens at much higher costs, as we have seen through the macro presentation, close to 3.84. I think there might be some dynamics uh, which also might relate in terms of softness in revenue numbers or the gas uh, uh, part of their business as well. Uh, uh, fortunately, I think the hydrocarbon business or the deep drilling exploration business and the pricing thereof has remained unchanged. Uh, but uh, what probably happens in terms of uh, cash flows, uh, what happens in terms of the capex requirements for new fields, uh, whether it's on-site or offshore that we are talking about, uh, and what happens if Brent pricing is expected to stay in the range uh, of 30 to $40 a barrel uh, or around $40 on an annualized basis if that does improve, uh, what kind of an impact does that have? Uh, is, is clearly what uh, prices, uh, what, what the stock price is probably suggesting. Uh, so clearly, I think sales and earnings have uh, uh, gone down. It's not just uh, uh, for, for this quarter or the past few quarters because of the pricing pressures that we've seen, slowness in demand, and that has got reflected in terms of uh, how prices have behaved. Uh, therefore, I think a uh, uh, critical like game for ONGC, I think, uh, how both these elements at play can cause upheaval in earnings is somewhere where I wanted to draw attention to. Uh, uh, for, for some of these producers, like, uh, as I said, the individual producers in terms of uh, uh, LNG usage. Now, LNG usage is, uh, uh, as I said, the pricing has come up significantly. A lot of these players are probably looking at, looking at revisiting and renegotiating their contracts as well. Uh, and therefore, I think how this entire pricing effect takes place uh, and if it does at lower levels, I think it's definitely beneficiary for a lot of these companies at uh, play. Uh, the second element in terms of the end user industries is also extremely critical because who are the end users who probably assume and uh, take this? So fertilizer companies, uh, uh, gas producers, for example, a lot of the gas application takes place. Uh, and you probably also got a lot of city gas distributors uh, who probably are also looking at uh, 
different element in terms of input costs. Uh, so I think for a lot of these other players, uh, there is obviously benefits that come through in terms of input costs uh, actually uh, going down. But I think the demand dynamics need to be monitored as well because the end user industries will react ultimately to how the global macros are behaving, how local macros are behaving, and from a bottom-up perspective, how the entire scenario is planning out. Uh, therefore, I think uh, earnings hit from a Q1, Q2 perspective uh, probably might be given, and therefore I think the entire thesis in terms of uh, how these stocks are to be looked at uh, in lieu of commodity prices and in lieu of uh, expectations of demand and volume coming back uh, is extremely critical in terms of determination of forward numbers. Gas distributors, again, uh, uh, two folds here. Uh, uh, gas distributors are basically looking at uh, CNG, PNG. So the PNG part, uh, again, is uh, more determined in terms of usage uh, domestically. There is also industrial use of gas uh, and how autos uh, use use uh, the compressed natural gas as well so with the lockdowns coming through a lot of industrial activity has gone down uh, a lot of vehicles being off the road so the part of the industrial business definitely gets affected so q1 hit is assumed to take place for a lot of these companies as well uh, domestic gas is probably held up but with prices coming down uh, uh, the immediate corollary effect was seen with igl actually cutting down prices uh, uh, for for uh, uh, the the NCR region as well, both for CNG as well as PNG, because it was a natural occurrence uh, that happened in terms of uh, input costs going down and the benefits being passed on. So as uh, acceptance come for uh, this cleaner fuel, which is probably far more cleaner uh, and less uh, uh, carbon emitting than uh, diesel or petrol, I think the usage here of uh, both from a domestic and an industrial purpose might go up. So I think the new geographical city areas that uh, get floated, uh, CGDs, uh, city gas distribution areas, uh, get tenders float hote hain, uh, aur ye companies bid karti hain. So kaafi kuch volume growth ki shamata hai ye sare companies ke liye, aur ye sare companies exhibit kar sakti hai over a period of time significant volume growth. Uh, जिसके वजह से इनकी जो टॉप लाइन ग्रोथ है ये वॉल्यूम्स के साथ निर्भर होती है जैसे वॉल्यूम बेस्ड प्राइसिंग आती है और जैसे वॉल्यूम्स बढ़ते हैं इनकी पूरी डायनामिक्स जो होती है जो फिक्स कॉस्ट के इंटर करते हैं ये स्प्रेड आउट होते जाता है और इनका जो ब्रेक इवन पॉइंट होता है हर एक जोग्राफिकल एरिया के पीछे ये डिटरमाइन करता है यूसेज के ऊपर लेकिन जो एक्सेप्टेंस है क्योंकि पर कॉस्ट यूनिट अगर आप देखते हैं और बड़े शहरों में जैसे बंबई दिल्ली में हम यूज कर रहे हैं गैसेस घर पे आई थिंक इट्स फार मोर लेस कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एंड फार कन्वीनियंट इकोनॉमिकली टू यूज दैट इसलिए ये सारी चीजें आई थिंक मद्देनजर रखनी चाहिए बट uh, अर्निंग्स का हिट क्या आ सकता है क्यू वन के हिसाब से डेफिनेटली आ सकता है बट गोइंग फॉरवर्ड क्या रैशनलाइजेशन आ सकता है एनुअलाइज बेसिस पे डेफिनेटली आ सकता है क्योंकि पहले एक दो क्वार्टर शायद हिट ले बट uh, जो एक्सेप्टेंस ये बढ़ रही है इसकी और जैसे आई थिंक इसकी पूरी एक डायनामिक्स है एबिटा फ्रंट पे आई थिंक ये सिटी गैस डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग प्लेयर्स को एक थोड़े बेनिफिशियल पोजीशन में रखती है लादर देन अपस्ट्रीम और डाउनस्ट्रीम और एक उदाहरण बीपीसीएल जो एक डाउनस्ट्रीम कंपनी है डाउनस्ट्रीम का मतलब यही होता है कि क्रूड ये इम्पोर्ट करते हैं इसको फिर प्रोसेस करते हैं और प्रोसेस करने के बाद इनको मार्केट करते हैं तो मार्केट करते हैं थ्रू पेट्रोल स्टेशन जो हमें पेट्रोल पंप्स दिखते हैं बीपीसीएल आईओसी एचपीसीएल के जो देश भर में फैल चुके हैं इनका दूसरा लाइन ऑफ बिजनेस डाउनस्ट्रीम का भी है विच मीन जो पेट्रेम प्रोडक्ट्स बेचते हैं और अन्य वैल्यू एडेड प्रोडक्ट जैसे लुब्रिकेंट्स अगर आप इनके पेट्रोल पंप्स पे जाते हैं तो लुब्रिकेंट सेल्स वगैरह जो ये पेट्रोल पंप पे करते हैं विच इज देर वैल्यू एडेड एडिशनल प्रोडक्ट्स ये सारी चीजें प्ले पे होती है बीपीसीएल के केस में आई थिंक जो डिवेस्टमेंट का एक 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 मुहिम सरकार ने उठाई है इस पे क्या कदम लिए जाएंगे गोइंग फॉरवर्ड ये बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग होने वाला है क्योंकि इसकी जो एंटरप्राइज वैल्यू आएगी कौन बिडर एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम बिड करना चाहेगा जो अपीवल हमने देखे अपीवल इन टर्म्स ऑफ ब्रेड प्राइसिंग एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ये बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग डायनेमिक्स होंगे और अगर ब्रेड प्राइसिंग सुधरती है गोइंग फॉरवर्ड Okay, at some point it has with demand expected to come back. तब शायद क्या dynamics आती है valuation के front पे ये बहुत interesting होगा. कुछ companies जैसे IOC है उनके transmission lines भी हैं. तो उनके तीन चार basic revenue generating models हैं. 
जो ट्रांसमिशन लाइन से आते हैं रिफाइनिंग से आते हैं और रिफाइनिंग के लिए आई थिंक काफी पैरामीटर्स रहते हैं जैसे हम बार बार कहते हैं सिंगापुर ग्रॉस रिफाइनिंग मार्जिन तो इट्स नथिंग बट कन्वर्जन ऑफ ब्रेंड इन टू रिफाइंड प्रोडक्ट्स फॉर यूसेज एट दी एंड रिटेल लेवल या इंडस्ट्रियल लेवल पे तो ये जो प्रोसेस होता है इसको रिफाइन करने का और इसकी जो कॉस्ट लगती है और क्या डायनामिक्स पे कर सकते हैं इनके रिफाइनिंग प्लांट उसको जी के तुलना में तुला जाता है और नेल्सन कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इंडेक्सेस के तुलना में तो हर एक प्लांट का एक नेल्सन कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इंडेक्स होता है ये इंडेक्स भापता और मापता है कि ब्रेंड का प्रोसेसिंग कैसे होगा तो जितनी बड़ी कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी एक रिफाइनिंग प्लांट की उसकी उतनी बड़ी क्षमता या अच्छी क्षमता रिफाइन करने के लिए आ, सबसे हार्ड स्क्रूड विच इज हैवी क्रूड जैसे हम कहते हैं या हैवी एंड लाइट क्रूड इंटू लाइट क्रूड और जिसे हम कहते हैं विच हैज अ लॉट ऑफ सल्फर कंटेंट क्योंकि जैसे मैं कह रहा था ब्रेंट और वेस्ट एक्सन क्रूड को लेस सल्फर कंटेंट है बट कुछ कुछ मिडिल ईस्टर्न प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं जिसका सल्फर कंटेंट हाई होता है इसलिए उसको जो डिस्टिलेशन या फिल्ट्रेशन प्रोसेस रहता है टू कन्वर्ट दैट इन टू यूजल फ्यूल इधर फॉर व्हीकल्स और फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल पर्पजेज आई थिंक जो कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी वो प्लांट्स में रहती है और अगर ये क्षमता ज़्यादा हो तो Uh, उसकी कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इंडेक्स हायर जी में रिफ्लेक्ट होती है इंडिविजुअल प्लांट्स के लिए तो ये सारी चीजें निर्भर करती है ओ के लिए अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई थिंक जो इन्वेंट्री गेन्स या लॉस की हम बात करते हैं दे हैव टू प्रोक्योर क्रूड एट अ सर्टन प्राइस अगर प्राइसिंग ऊपर रहेगी जैसे हमने पिछले कुछ महीनों में देखा है और अगर प्राइस क्रैश होती है तो उनको तो प्रोड्यूस करना है बट बिकॉज इन एक्टिविटी है तो शायद कम प्रोड्यूस करते हैं इसलिए फ्यूल एंड लॉस कंपोनेंट भी होता है ओ के लिए वो थोड़ा कम हो जाता है तो हालांकि आई थिंक थोड़े लॉसेस इन्वेंट्री लेवल पे आते हैं एडवेंचरस बेसिस पे कन्वर्ट करने के लिए फ्यूल्स में बिकॉज लेसर यूज ऑफ फ्यूल प्लांट्स एक फ्यूल एंड लॉस कंपोनेंट थोड़ा कम हो जाता है हालांकि आई थिंक जो डिप्रीशिएटिंग रूपी है ये भी मायने रखता है इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू है इम्पोर्टेड क्रूड एट अटन प्राइस और आज के तारीख में क्या प्राइसिंग है रुपए की डॉलर के तुलना में और ब्रेंड की इन टर्म्स ऑफ एडजस्टमेंट फॉर इन्वेंट्री लॉसेस एंड गेन्स एक चौथी चीज जो इनके साथ होती है इधर अपस्ट्रीम और डाउनस्ट्रीम स्ट्रीम इज क्रॉस होल्डिंग्स तो इनकी काफी इन्वेस्टमेंट्स है एक दूसरे के साथ या क्रॉस होल्डिंग कंपनीज में इसलिए उसके लिए वैल्यूएशन जब आप निकालते हैं तो ये भी नजर रखें या ध्यान में रखें जब आप एसओ टी निकाल रहे हैं एक होल्डिंग कंपनी डिस्काउंट आपको देना पड़ेगा सारे इन्वेस्टमेंट्स पे और ये सारी चीजें आपको तुलना रखनी पड़ेंगी इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्राइसिंग जो पिछले वर्ष में थी ये वर्ष में क्या फर्क पड़ेगा ब्रेंड और गैस प्राइसिंग या कमोडिटी प्राइसिंग के फर्क के फर्क के वजह से और कितना हिट आ सकता है बॉटम लाइन पे द काइंड ऑफ हिट ऑन द बॉटम लाइन डिटरमाइन कैश फ्लोज क्योंकि कैश फ्लोज डिटरमाइन होते हैं इन टर्म्स ऑफ अल्टीमेटली हाउ मच फ्री कैश दे आर एबल टू जनरेट अगर थोड़ी कब जनरेट कर पा रहे हैं तो कितनी डिविडेंट पे आउट दे पाएंगे और क्या डिविडेंट यील्ड और डिविडेंट पे आउट वही प्रोपोर्शन में रह सकता है गोइंग फॉरवर्ड सो ये चार ही चीजें आई थिंक चेंज होती रहती है एंड देर फोर आई थिंक आई एम ड्रॉइंग अटेंशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाउ ऑल दीज फैक्टर्स कॉज अ लॉट ऑफ चेंजेस इन अर्निंग्स एस्टिमेट्स फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ दीज कमोडिटी ड्रिवन कंपनीज सो आई थिंक मैंने हर एक सेक्टर का एक उदाहरण ले लिया था जो अफेक्ट हो जाता है Uh, अभी कुछ सेक्टर्स बेनिफिट ऑब्वियसली करते हैं लोअर क्रूड से ये ऑब्वियस एग्जांपल्स आर एविएशन फर्टिलाइजर पेंट्स प्लास्टिक्स एंड सेरेमिक्स बट इंडिविजुअल आई थिंक ये सारे सेक्टर्स और सारी कंपनियां विद इन दिस सेक्टर्स के लिए डिमांड का इशू है तो एविएशन के हालांकि ए टी एफ प्राइसिस हैज कम ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंटली मुझे लगता है आई थिंक जो डिमांड है और जैसे डिमांड स्टोलियन स्टडीली आएगी क्योंकि पूरे के पूरे लॉकडाउन में थे जैसे आपने ऑटो कंपनीज के आई थिंक नंबर्स देखे होंगे अप्रैल माह के लिए जो जीरो थे काफी कंपनी इसके लिए लिविंग असाइड ऑफ यू ट्रैक्टर कंपनीज एविएशन के लिए जीरो रेवेन्यूज है क्योंकि प्लेन्स उड़ नहीं रही थी फॉर द बेटर पार्ट ऑफ अप्रैल फॉर फॉर द बेटर पार्ट ऑफ मे एज वेल इसलिए आई थिंक जो चार्जेस ही इनकर करते हैं जो इनको लीजेस के चार्जेस देने ही है काफी कंपनी ऑपरेटिंग लीजेस में काम करती है प्लस रूपी डिप्रीशिएट हुआ है डॉलर के सामने इसलिए उनका जो आउटगो होता है इन टर्म्स ऑफ दीज लाइबिलिटीज वो फिर भी सिग्निफिकेंट रहती है जो काफी इम्पैक्ट ला सकती है नंबर्स पे इसलिए आपने देखा होगा जो प्राइस एक्शन है शायद ये सारे स्टॉक्स पे विच कम ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंटली दूसरा फर्टिलाइजर्स एक पॉजिटिव इम्पैक्ट आ सकता है फर्टिलाइजर्स के लिए क्योंकि आई थिंक जो गैस प्राइसिंग कम हुई है एट टू पॉइंट थ्री टू डॉलर 
पर एम बी इसका आई थिंक एक क्लियर बेनिफिट इम्पैक्ट आता है विथ लोअर इनपुट कॉस्ट ये सारे फर्टिलाइजर क्षेत्र कंपनीज के लिए अगेन आई थिंक खरीफ सीजन स्टार्ट होने वाला है फ्रॉम जून टू सेप्टेम्बर इसलिए क्यू वन क्यू टू बहुत क्रिटिकल होता है गवर्नमेंट ने आई थिंक बहुत स्मार्टली ये सारे जो सेमी रूरल रूरल एरियाज की कंपनीज हैं या इंडस्ट्रियल एक्टिविटी जनरेटिंग जोन्स हैं उसमें ये जो सारी कंपनी ऑपरेट करती हैं इनको आई थिंक ग्रीन सिग्नल दे दिया है देर ऑपरेटिंग एंड देव स्टार्टेड ऑपरेशन एट मोस्ट प्लांट्स जिसके लिए आई थिंक जो एंड फार्मर को लगते हैं सीड्स न्यूट्रिय क्रॉप प्रोटेक्शन केमिकल्स फर्टिलाइजर्स ये सारी चीज़ें अवेलेबिलिटी में है और ये सारी चीज़ें आई थिंक थोड़ी सपोर्ट करेगी अर्निंग्स के हिसाब से आई थिंक तो दोनों चीज़ें आई थिंक मायने रखेंगी फ्रॉम अ अर्निंग्स परस्पेक्टिव इज वेल पेंट्स के लिए ऑब्वियसली टाइटेनियम डाइऑक्साइड जो एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट क्रूड डेरिवेटिव होता है और जो 20-25 प्रतिशत होता है इनके इनपुट कॉस्ट का ये सिग्निफिकेंटली घट गया है बिकॉज द क्रैश दैट यू सीन इन ब्रेंड प्राइसिंग जैसे मैंने कहा आई थिंक गैसोलीन एंड लॉट ऑफ क्रूड डेरिवेटिव्स आर डायरेक्टली डिटरमाइंड ऑन हाउ ब्रेंड प्राइसिंग इज इसलिए आई थिंक कॉस्ट एलिमेंट के हिसाब से सिग्निफिकेंट रिडक्शन हमको देखने मिलेगा गोइंग फॉरवर्ड विद दी अजम्पन एज ए सेट ऑफ ब्रेंड स्टेइंग बिटवीन थर्टी थर्टी फाइव और एट फोर्टी डॉलर अ बैरल इज स्टिल सिग्निफिकेंटली लोअर देन वॉट देड इनकर अयर बैक और फ्यू क्वार्टर्स बैक इज वेल जो टॉप लाइन है ऑब्वियसली आई थिंक पेंट फर्स्ट हाफ के लिए थोड़ा इम्पैक्ट डेफिनेटली देखने मिलेगा क्योंकि अगेन प्रोडक्शन इज स्टार्टेड वेरी वेरी स्लोली जो रीपेंटिंग डिमांड होगा वो देश के जी डी पी के तुलना में ग्रो होता है एट वन एंड हाफ टाइम्स तो अगर हम मान के चल रहे हैं जैसे वर्ल्ड बैंक ने uh, सारे देशों के आई थिंक जी डी पी घटा दिए हैं ये वित्त वर्ष के लिए भारत का उन्होंने अनुमान लगाया है वन पॉइंट एट परसेंट फॉर दिस ईयर तो अगर आप वन पॉइंट फाइव टाइम्स भी अज्यूम करते हैं तो वॉल्यूम ग्रोथ शायद मिडिल सिंगल डिजिट्स में आ जाए पेंट कंपनीज के लिए विल बिल भी लेसर इसलिए एनालिस्ट स्ट्रीट पे यही मान के चल रहे हैं कि काफ़ी जो पेन आएगा जो काफ़ी सेक्टर्स को भी आएगा शायद स्लोनेस इन डिमांड और वॉल्यूम जो पिकअप होंगी सेकेंड हाफ में क्योंकि मानसून में आई थिंक पेंटिंग एक्टिविटी बंद हो जाती है काफ़ी आई थिंक जो डिमांड आता है वो फेस्टिव सीजन के अराउंड आता है जो सेकेंड हाफ में आता है दिवाली दशहरा एंड ऑल दी अदर फेस्टिविटीज डेट कम थ्रू तब तक आई थिंक देर विल बी बेटर डायनेमिक्स सेमी रूरल रूरल एरियाज में इवन फ्रॉम अ ग्लोबल परस्पेक्टिव एंड द अर्बन परस्पेक्टिव एज वेल तो सेकेंड हाफ में जो रिकवरी आ सकती है डिमांड के हिसाब से वो शायद इम्पैक्ट करेगी वॉल्यूम्स को बट ओवरऑल एनुलाइज वॉल्यूम जैसे मैंने कहा गेट्स डिटरमाइंड ऑन द ओवरऑल जी डी पी एक जो रफ बेंच मार्क है एंड विच हेज बीन सीन ओवर द लास्ट सो मेनी ईयर्स तो शायद आई थिंक एक इम्पैक्ट डिमांड और नंबर्स टॉप लाइन पे दिखे तो हालांकि आई थिंक इनपुट कॉस्ट में एक, एक सुधार देखे जैसे एविएशन कंपनीज में दिखे क्या डिमांड और वॉल्यूम वापस आएगी इन ए सिग्निफिकेंट मैनर विच कैन ऑफसेट दैट आई थिंक ये देखना बहुत जरूरी है प्लास्टिक्स पॉलिमियर्स अगेन आई थिंक एक बहुत सिग्निफिकेंट कंपोनेंट होता है इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्रूड क्रूड डेरिवेटिव एज वेल कैसे डिटरमाइन होती है इनके आई थिंक क्योंकि सारे डाउन प्रोडक्ट्स होते हैं जैसे मैं कह रहा था आई थिंक पेटकेम हो पी एक्स ए हो पी टी ए हो ऑल दीज प्राइस आर लार्जली डिटरमाइंड ऑन हाउ क्रूड प्राइसिंग बिहेव क्योंकि क्रूड प्राइसिंग घट चुकी है बिकॉज इट इज कम डाउन इनकी जो एंड प्राइसिंग होती है आई थिंक दैट कम्स डाउन क्वाइट सिग्निफिकेंटली एज वेल एंड देर फोर वॉट हैपन्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द अल्टीमेट टॉप लाइन मैकेनिज्म ये सारी कंपनीज के लिए इज एक्सट्रीमली क्रिटिकल इसलिए आप सारे चार्ट में देखेंगे जो हम डिस्प्ले करते हैं मार्केट स्मित के चार्ट पे आई थिंक जो ई पी एस रेटिंग होती है आई थिंक दैट बिकम्स एक्सट्रीमली क्रिटिकल तो आई थिंक कुछ कंपनियां जो होती हैं आई थिंक जो हमें लगता है बेनिफिट करेंगी बट ये सारे फैक्टर्स की वजह से आई थिंक क्योंकि टॉप लाइन ग्रोथ नहीं आती और जो हम माइनॉर इम्पोर्टेंस रखते हैं इवेल्यूशन पेज पे जो हमारे चेकलिस्ट के पेज पे होता है कि टॉप लाइन ग्रोथ कैसी है ई पी एस ग्रोथ कैसी है तो जो ई पी एस रेटिंग टैप से आई थिंक निकल के आता है और अगर ई पी एस रेटिंग पुअर हो आई थिंक वो क्लियरली दर्शाता है कि स्टॉक्स का जो परफॉर्मेंस है फंडामेंटली आई थिंक वीक है इवन इन दिनेरियो वेरी अज्यूबिंग की कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स कट्स हो चुके हैं ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट एंड वो इनडायरेक्ट बेनिफिट जो आ चुका है इन टर्म्स ऑफ लोअर टैक्सेस स्टिल नॉट गेटिंग प्लेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ दी बॉटम लाइन ग्रोथ तो ई पी एस रेटिंग स्टॉक की जो परफॉर्मेंस होती है टॉप लाइन पे जैसे मैं दिखा रहा था आपको इवेल्यूशन चार्ट पे जो ओवरऑल मास्टर स्कोर निकल के आता है पूरे चेकलिस्ट से फंडामेंटली ये रिफ्लेक्ट करेगा ऑब्वियसली बेस पैटर्न पे जो ऑटोमेटिकली निकलते हैं चार्ट के ऊपर एंड बेस पैटर्न विल नॉट गेट फॉर्म
ग्राफ है एंड जस्ट टेक यू बैक जो लोअर एंड ऑफ द ग्राफ है आई थिंक वो आई थिंक दिशा दिखाता है और उस पर निर्भर होता है पूरी की पूरी प्राइस एक्शन क्योंकि वॉल्यूम और प्राइस एक्शन आपके फेवर में नहीं रहता फॉर ऑल दीज फैक्टर्स और जैसे मैं दिखा रहा था लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पे जो ई और सेल्स है और जो चेकलिस्ट पेज पे ई रेटिंग आती है ये सारी चीजें निर्भर करती है इन टर्म्स ऑफ ओवरऑल कॉल दैट यू कैन प्रॉब्ली टेक ऑन द स्टॉक एंड दीज आर गाइडिंग चेक पॉइंट्स जो हम हमारे सॉफ्टवेयर थ्रू आपको प्रोवाइड करते हैं जो जो आई थिंक मैनुअल बायसिस को हटाते हैं एट एनी गिवन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सेरेमिक प्लेस के लिए क्लियरली आई थिंक वॉट हैपन्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द एक्टिविटी गोइंग फॉरवर्ड एज वेल आई थिंक ये बहुत क्लियरली डिटरमाइन करता है हालांकि गैस प्राइसिंग वापस कम हो चुकी है जो डिमांड है आई थिंक दैट हैज नॉट इम्प्रूव दैट सिग्निफिकेंटली क्योंकि डिमांड इतना बड़ा नहीं है जैसे प्लास्टिक्स पॉलिमियस के केस में है जैसे पेंट्स और एविएशन के केस में हो सकता है आई थिंक अनलेस डिमांड स्टार्ट्स इंप्रूविंग सिग्निफिकेंटली जो एक इनहेरेंट बेनिफिट होता है द इनहेरेंट बेनिफिट ऑफ अ बैलेंस शीट एज वॉल्यूम्स इंक्रीज बिकॉज ऑफ इंक्रीज डिमांड वेर प्राइसिंग स्टेज इन फेवर ऑफ द सप्लायर्स इन द मार्केट एंड बिकॉज प्राइसिंग एंड वॉल्यूम आर इन फेवर दैट ऑपरेटिंग लेवरेज गेट्स प्लेड आउट इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्ट्रॉन्ग ऑपरेटिंग परफॉर्मेंस एंड बॉटम लाइन ग्रोथ ये शायद मिसिंग होता है क्योंकि एक पीस अगर मिसिंग हो इसमें जो डिमांड है जो है क्रिटिकल पीस है वो ऑपरेटिंग लेवरेज नहीं देती है कंपनियों पे और इसका बहुत ज्यादा इफेक्ट आ सकता है दूसरा आई थिंक जो ये चीजों को इम्पैक्ट कर रहा है इज न्यूज एलिमेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाइक ऑफ ऑफ एंटी डंपिंग ड्यूटी दैट अलॉट ऑफ दीज मिडल ईस्टर्न कंट्रीज इम्पोज ऑन इंडिया एंड चाइना तो जो एडीडी ड्यूटी लगाई है काफी सेरामिक और फॉसिट uh, प्लेयर्स पे Uh, वो सिग्निफिकेंट इंक्रीज हुई है जिसका मतलब है जो एंड यूजर अगर इंडिया चाइना से ये सारी चीजें मंगाते हैं उनकी चीजें बहुत ज्यादा कॉस्टली हो जाएंगी सो आई थिंक द वॉल्यूम्स दैट दीज मिडल ईस्टर्न कंट्रीज जनरेट एज अ प्रोपोर्शन इज ऑलमोस्ट थर्टी थर्टी फाइव फोर्टी ऑट परसेंट एक सिग्निफिकेंट से होता है तो अगर ये वॉल्यूम घटता है तो डोमेस्टिक सप्लाईज डोमेस्टिक कंजम्पन के टेक ओवर कर पाएगा सो so, ये सारी चीजें देखना भी बहुत जरूरी होता है and not just one angle so i think ek angle bahut important hai food prices ka but uh, ye sectors jo uh, benefit ya nahi benefit karte hain so i think the title probably should be sectors that benefit or not benefit from lower food prices is also expected to be taken into account very very critically so some of the stocks uh, just for reference uh, in terms of performance jaise maine kaha i think uh, kuch fertilizer stocks ke liye uh, uh, positive signs hai uh, पेन स्टॉक्स के लिए आई थिंक आपको निर्भर करना पड़ेगा जैसे मैं कह रहा था एंड यू हैव टू प्रॉब्ली डू सम नंबर क्रंचिंग दैट वी हैव डिस्प्लेड इन आर प्रोडक्ट इट सेल्फ एंड जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट हाउ द नंबर्स आर प्लेइंग आउट फॉर अ फ्यू ऑफ द अधिसिव प्लेस इज वेल आई थिंक जो वीएम प्राइस होते हैं आई थिंक विनाइल एसेट मोनोमियर प्राइसेस दे अगेन आर अ पार्ट ऑफ क्रू डेरिवेटिव्स एक इनडायरेक्ट बेनिफिशियरी होते हैं क्योंकि वापस 20 से 25 प्रतिशत इनपुट कॉस्ट के वैम प्राइसेस के ऊपर डिटरमाइन होते हैं वैम प्राइसेस हैव कम ऑफ क्वाइट सिग्निफिकेंटली ऑलमोस्ट 1650 डॉलर्स पर टन 1900 डॉलर पर टन के हिसाब से एज फार एज आई रिमेंबर व्हिच क्रिएट्स अ ह्यूज इंपैक्ट बट क्या डिमांड वापस आएगा क्योंकि काफी कुछ निर्भर होता है इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटीज और हालांकि आई थिंक फॉर एज एन एग्जांपल फॉर अ स्टॉक लाइक फिडलाइट इंडस्ट्रियल एक्टिविटीज अराउंड 15 20% ऑफ टॉप लाइन क्या उनका जो बाजार सेगमेंट है जो कंज्यूमर सेगमेंट है क्या ये रिकवर करेगा वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉगली यस दे गॉट लॉट ऑफ स्ट्रॉन्ग मोड्स विद प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक फेविकॉल जो मार्केट शेयर गेन करता है या इवन एम सील बट कितने हद तक आई थिंक ये प्रोवाइड कर सकेंगे इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिमांड आई थिंक ये नंबर क्रंचिंग करनी थोड़ी जरूरी है और अर्निंग जो मैं कह रहा था ई रेटिंग अलॉन्ग विद आर एस आई रेटिंग दैट कम्स थ्रू इन द चार्ट पेज इट सेल्फ एंड दी ओवरऑल चेक लिस्ट ये देखना बहुत जरूरी है अलॉन्ग विद इंस्टीट्यूशनल एक्टिविटी एट प्ले uh so now uh, i think i'm through uh i will take a few questions thode sawal jawab karte hain uh jo questions main answer nahi kar paunga aap uh, bilkul forward kar dijiye uh, because then i'll be taking those questions uh, offline uh, and we will get back to you in terms of uh, uh answering those as well uh, so i'll just take a couple of minutes for the questions to get stacked up main thode sawalon ka jawab uh, dene ki koshish karunga uh obviously i'll give a sectoral view uh, but individually i think kuch stocks ka janna ho to my team will get back in terms of how the chart evaluation patterns are uh forming at this point of time aur kaisi uski eps rating hai aur rsi rating hai uh, at this point of time so i'll take a couple of minutes in terms of uh, uh, getting the uh, questions stacked up
So I'll just take one more minute uh, for, for the questions to stack up. You need to give me one more minute. So I'll start with uh, a few questions on uh, hand uh, which have come through. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, just a minute. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let me start off with the uh, latest one. So uh, Tejas has a question in terms of are we in for a new crude range of 20 to 40 dollars for a few years? Jaise me keh raha tha Tejas, what I was saying in the beginning, right? Uh, a lot of dynamics uh, happen in terms of crude pricing uh, and how uh, and uh, how demand supply dynamics are basically playing out. So at this point of time, uh, uh, definitely demand has gone off the curve. Uh, uh, there are steps being taken, as I said, by the OPEC guys because it's a much more organized. Uh, organization and a cartel in terms of determining brand prices uh, uh, but clearly I mean, even with the 10 million cut i think the demand expected to the demand that is expected to be i think is expected to go down as well so i think the international energy uh, uh, estimates are saying that uh, demand is also expected to come down so we are probably assuming and uh, uh, and, and as i've read in a lot of reports that uh, crude might probably stay between 30 and 40 dollars the barrel but it all depends in terms of how the recovery happens uh, in the second half itself. Basically, I think the uh, core economic dynamics and as I think uh, uh, production costs, ki baat kar raha tha, I think these uh, dynamics, I think, uh, maybe a lot of producers go uh, uh, playing field. Se bahar nikali. Isle, I think a uh, level playing field ho jata hai with uh, only the stronger hands uh, having less debt on their balance sheets uh, still able to survive. Uh, as I said, the cost of dynamics for Saudis, uh, Middle Eastern guys to produce crude is still uh, lower than where Brent is at this point of time. But they need a substantial portion because the GDP spending is done, it is on the crude savings. So, the price of crude pricing will increase, they will spend it. So, I think a uh, uh, few economies are not going to get impacted, but like the shale producers, hai, I think, uh, they definitely get impacted. The uh, rig count is different. Therefore, uh, I think uh, the presumptions that I am reading through a lot of reports is that crude expected around $35-$40. Uh, 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 bar bar There are a few questions that are coming outside the oil and gas space. Uh, so I'll request uh, all of you that uh, we will keep this topic restricted to uh, oil and gas as a sector. Uh, I think I'm going to take each and individual sector each each uh, Saturday. Uh, so ek -ek sector ka discussion in a detailed analysis way. Mein karenge. Uh, there is a question from Sum Suman Kumar Verma uh, uh, for upstream and downstream stocks. Uh, as I said, I think the excise hikes uh, that have taken place from petrol and diesel uh, uh, and the absorption that OMCs uh, or the downstream companies are supposed to do, I think is going to be a significant hit. Uh, secondly, I think in terms of uh, the overall sales portfolio itself, if you probably look at the OMC basket uh, uh, in terms of a product suite, uh, diesel sales are almost 40, 42 odd percent, petrol sales are almost 18 to 20 odd percent of their overall uh, uh, product uh, uh, profile uh, with uh, industrial activity down with planes not flying you're clearly going to see uh, 
that uh, portion come down significantly on the diesel part even on the petrol part with lockdowns uh, that portion is going to come off because a lot of petrol stations uh, are are shut down whatever are operating are operating at very very minimal capacity so the fixed costs are still happening at a certain pace uh, on top of that the grms have probably come off quite significantly now grms are determined on a lot of factors uh, so how the gasoline cracks are how naphtha cracks are uh, processing kitna ho raha hai demand supply kya hai so ye sari cheezon pe i think nirbhar karta hai grm cracks singapore grms are at abysmally low level तो अल्टीमेटली आई थिंक जितना आउट परफॉर्मेंस हो सकता है थोड़े एक्सटेंड टच हो सकता है कंसिडरिंग द नेक्सल कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी फॉर ईच रिफाइनिंग प्लांट एज आई सेड बट ओवरऑल आई थिंक जो डाउनस्ट्रीम कंपनीज के लिए है आई थिंक थोड़ा दिक्कत भरा साल हो सकता है एंड इंक्लूडिंग अपस्ट्रीम सो आई थिंक जो अपस्ट्रीम की आप बात कर रहे थे जो अपस्ट्रीम कंपनीज को मैंने कहा आई थिंक जो ऑयल प्राइसिंग होती है वो डायरेक्टली टॉप लाइन बॉटल लाइन को डिटर्माइन करती है क्योंकि ऑयल प्राइसिंग सिग्निफिकेंटली घट गई है और अगर हम एजम्पन भी करते हैं कि बढ़ती भी है एट एट अ सर्टन पेज Uh, fir bhi i think it's significantly lower than last year uh, top of that i think gas pricing has got revised uh, so kahin na kahin i think ek double whammy jaisa ho jata hai plus capex to inko thoda bahut karna hi padta hai because i think it's a government uh, 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 generated capex that they have to do on on the capex side so i think capex bhi agar thoda kam kar liya to cash flows pe solid impact aata hai isliye the entire scenario is uh, uh, that uh, there is weakness in numbers that can get exhibited uh, बोथ अपस्ट्रीम और डाउनस्ट्रीम कंपनीज के लिए आई थिंक प्रिजम्पन यही है कि अगले दो क्वार्टर तीन क्वार्टर और एनुअलाइज नंबर जो ये वित्त वर्ष के लिए है ये शायद फ्लैट या थोड़े नेगेटिव साइड पर रहे कम्पेयर टू द लास्ट ईयर बट रिकवरी कैसे आती है क्योंकि वर्ल्ड बैंक ने यह भी कहा है कि देर माइंड वी शेप रिकवरी इन जी डी पी विद एक्सपोनशियल पेंट अप डिमांड कमिंग थ्रू तो जो नंबर घटाए गए हैं इंडिया के लिए एट वन पॉइंट एट देर एक्सपेक्टेड टू ग्रो एट फाइव पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव पॉइंट एट इन द कमिंग फाइनेंशियल ईयर इसलिए विद डिमांड कमिंग बैक वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉगली मे बी सेकेंड हाफ में वी विल गेट बेटर एस्टिमेट्स अगर हम ये सारी चीजें प्रिज्यूम करके चलते हैं इन द फर्स्ट हाफ कि अगर डिमांड डायनामिक सुधर रही है तो कितना बिल्ट इन करना चाहिए एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री के नंबर के हिसाब से वापस आई थिंक एक सवाल आया है रिलायंस का रिफाइनिंग कितना कंट्रीब्यूट करता है और रिलायंस कैसे कर रहा है ऑब्वियसली द काइंड ऑफ इम्पैक्ट जो आप देख रहे हैं रिफाइनिंग से आई थिंक काफी कम हो चुका है तो आई थिंक इवन विद इन दी ऑयल टू केमिकल स्पेस जो हम ओ टू सी स्पेस बोलते हैं रिलायंस के लिए विच इंक्लूड रिफाइनिंग एज वेल एज पेटकेम डेफिनेटली आई थिंक जो रिफाइनिंग का पार्ट है दैट इज कम ऑफ पेटकेम हैज गॉट अलायंस एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम and both these businesses ultimately get determined in terms of uh, uh, pricing global demand supply ultimately right uh, jo petchem ka anuman laga raha hai i mean a lot of bloomberg consensus as i see is that there can be significant reduction in terms of petchem revenues and petchem ebit as well similarly i think jo outperformance hum dekhte hain grm pe refining business pe uh, reliance ke kyunki inke paas feedstock ke bahut options hai jo i think input ye use karte hain process karne ke liye unke jamnagar ke plant mein ho ya other ones uh, I think the processing capacity can use a lot of other feedstocks, including ethane, methane that they probably use. So, the dynamics होते हैं हर एक feedstock के और जो favorable dynamics होते हैं वो use करते हैं. But I think refining का contribution overall I think काफी घट चुका है. Even in the O2C space, petrochem is still a defining portion. I think it's geo और जो geo के deals चल रही हैं one after the other. That is what is creating a huge enterprise value for geo and geo platforms itself. तो जो पांच लाख पंद्रह हजार करोड़ के आई थिंक एंटरप्राइज वैल्यूएशन आ रहे हैं जियो प्लेटफॉर्म्स के लिए आई थिंक दैट इज सिग्निफिकेंट एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम क्योंकि आप टेक इंडेक्स को देख लीजिए एंड जस्ट अ कॉरलरी एग्जांपल अगर मैं दूँ तो जो जियो का एंटरप्राइज वैल्यूएशन है और अगर आप टीसीएस इन्फोसिस और एच हटाते हैं तो जियो वैल्यूएशन इज फार हायर देन दर टेक्स पेस एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम बट जो इंटरेस्ट जाके आ रहा है और सम ऑफ पार्ट पे तो आई थिंक जियो लेके जाएगा और इस पे क्या कदम उठाते हैं बिकॉज वी आर नॉट रियली श्योर कि क्या ये डील स्टिंग करेंगे अपना जियो और रिटेल प्लेटफॉर्म का अलग से एज रिटेल बिजनेस क्योंकि दे आर स्टिल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग अराउंड फोर्टी फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ इबिटा जो पचास साठ परसेंट तक मुकेश भाई को लेके जाने अगले कुछ क्वार्टर या वर्षों में विच एम प्रिटी श्योर हिल टेक एट द पेस दे आर ग्रोइंग एंड ओ टू सी का आई थिंक बिजनेस प्रॉब्लम स्टेज एट अ सर्टन लेवल बट क्या आराम को का इसमें पैसा आता है his, uh, still assuming and presuming that uh, it is still very much on track uh, uh, geo telephony business ko leke infocom business ko leke i think jo unke tower assets hai fiber assets hai 
इसमें एक डील चल रही थी क्या वहाँ पे मोनिटाइजेशन होता है तो आई थिंक काफी कुछ पॉजिटिव चीजें कुछ चल रहे हैं सो uh, रिफाइनिंग so का जो है कम्पेयर टू हाउ ऑयलैंड गैस डेफिनेटली दैट गेट्स इम्पैक्टेड पेटकेम गेट्स इम्पैक्टेड जैसे मैं कह रहा था आई थिंक ये पेटकेम का एबिट है कंसेंस uh, बेसिस पे आई थिंक घट चुका है ये जो कंसेंस बेसिस पे एक जी का एक घटोतरी है आई थिंक अराउंड नाइन टेन जो एवरेज जी आर कर रहे थे पीपल आर रिज्यूमिंग एनी बिटवीन सेवन एनी एट सो हिट तो आना है ये पार्ट ऑफ द बिजनेस लाइक दी अदर्स इज वेल इन द पी एस यू स्पेस और दी अदर प्राइवेट स्पेस दैट यू गॉड बट अदर बिजनेस आर प्रॉब्ली होल्डिंग अप दी ओवरऑल वैल्यूएशन so fertilizer segment gets positively impacted i've uh, given you the reasons why uh pains ke liye obviously i've uh, put my my entire thesis uh, uh, on how pains uh, are expected to operate at this point of uh, uh, time अनिल बाग जी का एक क्वेश्चन है कि पेन कंपनीज लाइक एशियन पेन्स यूज वाटर बेस्ड प्रोडक्शन सम ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन यूजेस वाटर एज अ कंपोनेंट सो जो वाटर बेस्ड सॉल्वेंट से यूज करते हैं पेन प्रोडक्शन के लिए आई थिंक ये आपको अंडरस्टैंड करना पड़ेगा कि पेन्स में भी आई थिंक दो से तीन ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज होती हैं सो देर आर प्रीमियम कैटेगरीज मिड प्रीमियम एंड द सब प्रीमियम कैटेगरीज एज आई वुड कॉल इट तो जो डिस्टेम्पर्स होते हैं सेमी इमल्शन होते हैं और इमल्शन पेंट्स होते हैं और जो पुट्टी वाले होते हैं प्रोडक्ट्स आई थिंक ये सारी चीजें अलग अलग इनपुट्स यूज करते हैं ना वाटर सॉल्वेंट्स आर गेटिंग यूज जो नए कैपेसिटी जो मैसूरू प्लांट डाल रहे हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन एशियन पेंट्स आई थिंक जो वाटर बेस्ड सॉल्वेंट्स यूज कर रहे हैं बट आई थिंक सर्टन कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ क्रूड बेस्ड डेरेविटिव स्टिल गेट यूज विद इन दैट सो आई थिंक जो कॉस्ट होती है आई थिंक जो लोअर रंग प्रोडक्ट्स होते हैं आई थिंक Uh, there the pricing also differs because of the usage of inputs that go in uh, jo extremely premium wale products hote hain i think uh, they use far better material that goes into that uh, but ultimately i think uh, as i said uh, ultimate uh, reflection happens in terms of demand for all these end user companies uh, or paint companies ke liye i think kaise demand uh, move hoga uh, dealer network uh, ka jo distribution network hota hai bahut critical hota hai तो एशियन पेंट्स ने अपने लिए तो बहुत बढ़िया मोड बना के रखा है नंबर वन डेकोरेटिव में है डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क इज फार फार लार्जर इनफैक्ट साठ हजार डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स है इफ आई एम नॉट मिस्टेक एन कम्पेयर टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड फॉर बर्जर और थोड़ा डिवर्सिफाई भी कर रहे हैं इन टर्म्स ऑफ किचन अपलायसेज मेकर जो इन्होंने टेक ओवर कर लिया है तो थोड़ी डिवर्सिफिकेशन भी चल रही है बिकॉज दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू बी अ सिंगल प्रोडक्ट कंपनी जो डिपेंड होती है लाइक एज ए सेड इफ कमोडिटी प्राइसेज कम ऑफ इफ डिमांड कम्स ऑफ देन देर कैन बी सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पैक्ट ऑन दिस इज वेल सो आई थिंक येस टू सर्टन एक्सटेंट Uh, थोड़ी कम हो जाती है कॉस्ट बट नॉट नॉट एंटायरली बिकॉज आई थिंक अदर फैक्टर्स आल्सो नीड टू बी काउंटेड फॉर सो विद दिस आई थिंक आई हैव ट्राइड टू अटेम्प्ट अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर अटेंडिंग दिस वेबिनार व्हाट एवर आई हैव नॉट आंसर्ड मे बी आई विल टेक दैट ऑफलाइन इफ यू कैन ड्रॉप योर मेल to our marketing team will definitely get back to you uh thanks for attending once again stay safe stay healthy and thank you very much again